Good evening, world. Welcome to Raw China. I'm your host, MC Lur, here to provide you with timely, unbiased analysis about how awesome China is. First this week, we take you to Washington, D.C., where senior citizen slash leader of the free world, Joe Biden, held a virtual meeting with the legend himself, Xi Jinping. During the virtual sesh, Chairman Xi emphasized the three principles and four priorities. Not to be confused, of course, with the four confidences, three supremes, four comprehensives, eight honors, eight shames, and definitely, definitely not the three represents. True to his snuggly nature, Chairman Xi sought to create a friendly atmosphere, referring to Biden as his "lao peng yo," i.e., a phrase that's warmth was sure to promote fruitful discussion between the two leaders. How would you describe their relationship going into this meeting? Well, I I think he, I can confirm, Peter. He just still does not consider him an old friend, so that remains consistent. <laughs> well, she doesn't want to be your friend anyway, so. Suck it, Biden. We don't need your friendship, freaking honky. Asians are sticking together on this one. Am I right, Japan? Uh, Korea? Vietnam? The, the Philippines? Uh, India. India counts as Asia, right? I, okay, okay. Don't worry about it, Sheep. I'll be your lao peng yo forever. Next up is our segment, Who's Slandering the Party Now? Athletes around the world have jumped on the anti-China bandwagon, looking to save their pathetic careers with vicious attacks against the party and party officials. Dennis Cantor using your likeness on his shoes in his uh, advocacy for human rights. Um, no, I think if you know me, I don't really give too many people my energy. Um, you know, and um, he's definitely not someone I will give my energy to. Um, you know, trying to use my name to create, you know, an opportunity for himself. Um, um, definitely won't uh, comment too much on that. I, for one, support LeBron James. No athlete should speak out about social justice issues that might hurt their bottom line. Recently, Chinese tennis player Peng Shuai made headlines when she alleged that she was sexually assaulted by former Vice Premier slash human salamander lookalike Zhang Gaoli. Though the amphibious looking CCP official may have slipped through the cracks of domestic criticism, the international community seems like like really upset for some reason. Chinese state media claiming that Peng is fine, showing what it said was an email she sent to the Women's Tennis Association, recanting the allegations. The head of the WTA doubts that Peng actually wrote it. We definitely want to speak to her directly and make sure that she's okay. What Serena Williams and the world, uh, women's world, WTA seem to forget is that China is a civilized country, okay? Allegations of sexual assault against CCP officials will be promptly investigated by CCP officials. In fact, according to my sources, she's already informed authorities that she's like super duper safe with 24 hour surveillance. So everybody just needs to relax, okay? I mean, what's there not to believe? Oh, there's a green dash between the word and. It's evidence that this letter is actually a screenshot of a word document written by Chinese state media and not Peng Shui herself. But what foreigners don't realize is that leaving green dashes in between English words is a rich Chinese tradition. I'm with the International Olympics Committee on this one. This letter seems legit. What you guys don't understand is Chinese state media cuts through the fat with their reporting. They get straight to the point. No time for citing your sources or any bullshit like that. Just last year, they received a screenshot of an email sent by MC Lur's ex-girlfriend. It read, MC Lur does not suffer from premature ejaculation like many have speculated. In fact, he's good. Uh, he's great in bed. And despite mediocre length, he makes up for it with solid girth. Also, he's super tough and rumors about him crying at the end of Ice Age are lies made up by that homeless German spy, Lao Le. Last is our segment, Wolf Warrior of the Week, who's kicking ass and taking names, making sure the world knows that China's wicked tough and not to blame. This week we go to a Shanghai Starbucks where one badass is making sure this Lao Wai follows the rules. I, I mean, his rules. Oh, by the way, I'm just recording, so... Yeah, I can tell you're recording, mm. and I'm asking you to put it on. I will. I will, once I've finished drinking. Well, finish it quickly, right? Why do I have to finish quickly? Because I'm asking you to put the fucking mask on. You done? Almost. Well, Are you waiting for me to finish? Yes, sir. <laughs> I've got all day. Okay, I know some of you Chinese speakers may point out that the man is clearly being racist here, but I assure you, you can't be racist towards white people. In fact, this wolf warrior is a victim. He's standing up for his country and showing the world that China's rising. 
in a, in a Starbucks. Actually, for a limited time only, you can now show your patriotism by buying the crushing capitalism cappuccino from any Starbucks location in China. For the small price of 160 yuan, you can give America the metaphorical middle finger. That's it for this episode of Raw China. Be sure to hit that subscribe button, like the video if you liked it, and praise me and the Communist Party in the comment section. Be sure to tune in next time if we do this next time. If you guys like it, we might do more. Right. I'm MC Lur. That's the word. Peace.